uh, sweet spot that we, we spoke earlier, driving in the sweet spot. So what we want to do is we want to try to describe here, and Bruce does a great job at this, so I'll, I'll be quiet here in just a minute and let him, let, let him explain it. But what we're trying to describe here is how you want to drive on an R compound tire to get the maximum level of performance without degrading and wearing the tire or abrading the tire unnecessarily. We try to capture that with a graph and then we're going to show you a short video and it's essentially driving below the maximum slip angle at the maximum G load. That's what this graph is capturing here. It's slip angle versus G load. And you don't want to drive where the red X's are and you want to approach the maximum grip of the tire and drive at that point and that'll give you the longest life and the best lap times without abrading the tire into nothing. I capture that one, right? Yeah, that's good. That's good. I mean, we have the uh, the vertical axis is lateral force. The horizontal axis is slip angle. And you can see that the R compound tire ramps up to lateral maximum lateral force quicker than like a street tire does. But you get up to that peak. And when you go over that peak where those red X's are on that, it's, that's when you're kind of wasting Wasting the tire, okay? You, you, you've heard of drivers that are really good on tires. It's those guys that drive in that green circle area. And there's some guys that are just aggressive and they drive over and where those red X's are, they're making the same lateral force, but they're really more abusing the tire more. And so that's why there's a variance in the life that some people get out of tires is how well they drive in that sweet spot as opposed to driving past the sweet spot, if that makes sense. Is that, uh, are there any questions about that? I, I think that's a really good explanation. I think this chart's also interesting in the sense of if you've been driving on um, street tires, you know, I don't want to say you're hanging it out, but, but really to really get the maximum out of a street tire, you really got to have a lot more slip angle in the car. Whereas uh, the, the A7, R7 here, you're, you're talking about being neater and more tidy, uh, with your driving style. And I think that's a, a good visual to understand that, you know, it's not just being on the front side of the curve, but also how it compares to the way you drive a street tire, I think is really interesting in an HPDE, um, context. Yeah, and, and it goes back to what we spoke of earlier, that confidence level. Okay. You can see that there's a high level of lateral force and a lower slip angle. And that that's where confidence comes from. And so there therein lies the improvement in lap time. You know, one thing that strikes me, too, is I've heard at, at track days, you know, people talk about um, a street tire is sort of more forgiving towards the limit, whereas an R compound tire can sort of break away more quickly. And I think it's interesting that that's that's not exactly what's going on here, because you can see that both tires sort of have that same tailored um, lateral force drop off with increased slip angle. But what it is, is that because the R compound tire builds up lateral force more quickly, there is sort of less forgiveness in the amount of slip angle the tire gets before the brake off starts happening. So, uh, you know, the overall limit is higher, but the operating range is narrower, which is, uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but you know, you have to be at a, a certain skill level to really take advantage of an R compound tire. And that's part of the reason why I think. Yeah, I mean, we could drill down into this deeper, deeper, but, you know, some, some R compound tire, tires even don't display this kind of profile. They would be peakier. Uh, they would go to peak and then after peak, they wouldn't drop, they would drop off a lot faster. And those are the kind of tires that break away without warning because you just, you get to the point of no return quicker than you can respond, so to speak. So and that's, this. that's, that's, uh, you know, that's a general, you know, profile curve to kind of demonstrate what we're trying to point out about driving in the sweet spot. Okay. And, and real keys, if you, if you work on the skill set, you know, part, part of, you know, part of growing as a driver and, and, and improving your skill set is to be able to function and operate the vehicle at the front side of that curve. You'll find it to be very rewarding, both to your lap time, where your success as a driver, as well as your pocketbook. You know, and, and you end up, you know, better or same position spending less money. You know, um, it's interesting. I just saw a question fly across the chat there. You know, define slip angle. You, that's a great segue. Well, why don't we go to the next slide? I think we're going to do our best to define slip angle here. And um, Bruce, I'll let I'm hand this one back to you again. Okay. What, what we're going to show you here is we have a short video of a, a Hoosier R compound tire 
on what we call a road wheel. It's a it's a it's equip a piece of equipment we use in our laboratory to do DOT testing and do all kinds of testing. Uh, what we did on this video is we simply ran the tire straight and then we induced some steering angle into it and you'll see the sidewall on the bottom side where the contact pitch patch is deflect okay and when it deflects you'll notice that the tire path is really it's kind of hard to see but the tire path is different than the wheel path and the difference in those paths is what's called slip angle and that was the the horizontal axis on that previous graph okay so we're just mainly trying to show you what happens to the tire when you turn a wheel or when the tire develops lateral force what it how the deflection works on this tire so let's roll the video okay that was uh, pretty self-explanatory there i uh all we did was just there's an X amount of load in the tire, and we just simply induce steering angle into the wheel, into the rim, and you can see how the tire deflected. And that this is this purpose of this video is to explain what slip angle is. I think that's a great video. We got some, we got a couple comments about a uh, great slide from this slide too, about explaining the difference between which direction the wheel is going, which direction the tire is going a slip angle. So uh, it, it looks like that's uh, doing the job. Yeah, all tires all tires will do this in the same condition. I see a question, is this specific to a Hoosier? That, that Hoosier tire is a, is a grippy, high performance tire. So that, you know, we talked about response. When you turn a wheel, the the amount of time it takes for that sidewall to respond and deflect and start making force is what enhances the performance aspects of the tire, what the driver feels. So again, that's uh, that's just a simple demonstration of what happens when you turn the wheel or when the, when the tire starts to load up and you're, how it deflects. You hear it really start to complain. That's not yeah, a good well, idea. When you get too much slip angle, <laughs> if you're driving on those X's, you might hear the tire yeah, tell you to stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right.